Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about tropical subtropical hot desert climate. Now in Köppen's classification climatic classification scheme, so as per Köppen climatic classification scheme, this particular type of climatic region has been denoted by BWH where W B represents a region where evaporation is greater than precipitation. W refers to arid region and H refers to hot. So hot deserts, B W H Copen's climatic classification scheme. Now, in this discussion, we are going to talk again about the distribution of this particular type of climatic belt or region, along with that, the parameters such as temperature and precipitation. Also, we are going to include the vegetation type and the animal life in this particular type of climatic region. So, first talking about the distribution of this type of climate, the hot deserts, tropical, subtropical hot deserts. So, across the world now, if we see the first one, which are the uh, coastal regions, the coastal regions where what I find is the region of California and northern Mexico. And over here, the desert that I find either would be Mojave Desert or let's say another one that I find as a Sonoran Desert or another one which I call as the Chihuahua Desert. Chihuahua Desert. So, these three deserts found in North America. Then after that, in South America, again along the coastal region, which extends to the coast of Chile and Peru. And over here, the desert that is Atacama Desert. Then in Africa, again the coastal region, if I find, that is Namib Desert, Namibia, and Kalahari Desert, Botswana. These two deserts extend into South Africa also. Then in addition to that, again along the coastal uh, part only, western side, I find this Great Australian Desert. Now this Great Australian Desert is uh, a collection of a number of uh, deserts uh, found in over here, which includes uh, Great Victoria Desert, Simpson Desert, Gibson Desert, as well as Tanami Desert, Great Sandy Desert and so on. So, the West Australian region which has the Great Australian Desert. Along with that, what I can see is uh, in the northern part of Africa. In the northern part of Africa, the largest of the hot desert that is Sahara Desert and further moving eastward, the Arabian Peninsula, Arabian Desert is found, Iranian Desert is found and in the Indian subcontinent, we have the Thar Desert. So, this is primarily the distribution of uh, this particular type of climate or the climatic region on the earth. Now, very obviously here, the question would be, if I exclude over here Sahara, be it Arabian, Iranian or Thar, the rest what I see over here, pretty much common is that these deserts are located on the western side of the continents, the western margin of North America, South America or Africa that is specifically the Namib Desert or the western side of Australia that is Great Australian Desert. What would be the primary reasons for that? So, first thing, the reasons. So, over here, this again remains a very probable question for the examination. Reasons for west location. So, the reasons for west location over here, if we talk about the first thing that is on the eastern side of the oceans, that is, let's say, for example, Pacific Ocean, you see this constitutes eastern side, this constitutes eastern side. Or in case of the Indian Ocean, this constitutes the eastern side. Or in case of Atlantic Ocean, this constitutes the eastern side. So, the eastern side of the oceans have greater stability of air masses. So, greater stability of air mass. And this greater stability of air masses is primarily due to the high pressures, high pressure cells which exist in the eastern margin of the 
oceans. That's the first thing. Along with that, due to this high pressure zone, it results in subsiding air in this region. And we know subsiding air is going to discourage the rainfall. So air subsides in these parts and so it discourages rainfall. Also, what can be seen is this would be the region, this would be the belt which would be the trade wind belt. And in case of trade wind belt, the winds would be blowing like this or winds would be blowing like this from this side. So winds would be blowing like this or in this region, the winds are blowing like this or the winds are blowing from here. Now, in any of these cases, these trade winds are easterly winds and so on the western side, these trade winds become offshore. And offshore winds, offshore trade winds so will have very less moisture and hence very less rainfall. So, another reason over here becomes offshore trade winds. So, offshore trades that becomes the third reason and along with that now what can be seen very clearly over here in this diagram itself is these are the regions or these are the parts where cold ocean currents are flowing in fact you can see california current given over there peruvian current or peru current humboldt current or in this part benguela current west australian current canary current all of these are cold ocean currents now, due to cold ocean currents, what is going to happen? Because the currents are cold ocean currents, that's why first of all, they are going to strengthen the high pressure. Yes. And second, now the cold ocean currents are going to produce desiccating effect. Now, what is this desiccating effect? Desiccating effect is drying effect. These are cold waters and so they, will, they are not going to encourage any evaporation. And due to lack of evaporation, the air is extremely dry. And that is called as the desiccating effect. So, cold currents by strengthening the high pressure in these regions as well as producing the desiccating effect, okay, further enhances the dryness of these regions. So, as a result, say for example, if you see Atacama Desert and Peruvian current, the Peru current or the Humboldt current is very cold and as a result, Atacama Desert is one of the driest places on the earth. So, these are the four reasons along with that definitely we also write if you get this in the examination and if in the option it is given for as weak atmospheric disturbances, this is pretty much a correct reason. Although it's a result of the above factors like greater stability or subsiding air that the atmospheric disturbances are very weak or absent in fact over here but yet now if given in the option you can definitely choose this so this becomes our uh, aspect related to the distribution why it is located on the western margin then moving further let's talk about the temperature aspect of this particular climatic belt and with respect to temperature, what we can see is this is a region which is going to receive the highest insulation. Highest insulation, why highest insulation? That is primarily because of the fact that clouds are not present over here. So, because the clouds are not there, cloudiness is not there, insulation is very high. Also, along with that, this region exhibits highest of the temperature so highest of the temperature over here what why the temperature is very high very obviously because clouds are not there so absence of clouds so when the clouds are not there there is nothing to scatter the incoming insulation and that's why we find such a high temperature then also along with that dry air so, when the air has water vapor, water vapor absorbs the insulation. But in the absence of that water vapor in the air, the insulation is not absorbed and very high amount of insulation reaches the ground. In addition to that, dry ground, 
that is on the ground also there is no water to evaporate because there is no water to be evaporated all the energy heat energy in the insulation is available for increasing the temperature that is the sensible heat so the temperature increases due to this particular fact so in this case now uh, absence of cloud as well as dry ground that is absence of moisture on the ground all of this results in extremely high temperatures in this region take for example okay a place called al azizia so al azizia in libya it has recorded highest of the shade temperatures till date which was recorded at 57.7 degree celsius so extremely extremely high temperature and again these are the specific points okay with respect to absence of cloud you are talk going to talk about a scattering with respect to dry air you are going to talk about absorption and with respect to dry ground we are going to say evaporation is not taking place so temperatures are extremely high in this particular region then apart from that when we talk about the annual range of temperature the annual range of temperature in this zone is very very high as well as the diurnal range so diurnal range is also very high so both are high take for example when you talk about the uh, annual range of temperature annual range of temperature can be anywhere in the range of 77 to 22 degree celsius which is quite significant a uh, annual range similarly along with that when you talk about uh, the uh, so this is was the annual range 17 to 22 degrees celsius and more so over if you talk about the diurnal range of temperature diurnal range of temperature is extremely extremely high now why diurnal range of temperature should be higher because again during uh, there is no clouds because there are no clouds cloudiness is very less that's why incoming insulation during the daytime is very high the temperature becomes very high but the same applies during the night time when because in the absence of clouds the loss of heat is extremely high and that's why temperature drops considerably in fact in this case the diurnal range of temperature can go as a high as 22 degrees to 28 degrees celsius also so the highest temperature during the day and lowest temperature it recorded during the night they it may differ by almost 28 degrees celsius so this extremely high temperature during the daytime and extremely low temperature during the night time that makes life very harsh in this particular region so this is about the temperature patterns that why we find over here now the next thing that is precipitation aspect and in terms of precipitation what can be primarily seen over here is definitely the rainfall is extremely less over here of course in the slide you are seeing very high rainfall but that yet do take place in the form of thunderstorms sometime primarily over here what i see is the average annual rainfall okay is less than 12 centimeter which is extremely extremely less the relative humidity when i talk about relative humidity in this zone is very less and relative humidity is less especially during the daytime because the temperatures are very high the temperature being very high the moisture holding capacity of the air becomes extremely high and that's why the relative humidity is less but at the same time we have to understand that the absolute humidity because the evaporation is high whatever water is available that evaporates and so absolute humidity is high in this case just because of high temperature and higher moisture holding capacity of the air the relative humidity remains very less but what will happen in the night time when the temperature is going to drop sharply the moisture holding capacity of the air is also going to drop and so rh is going to increase this will result in condensation and that's where in the early morning 
we find dew formation which in fact is collected by the tribes living in these regions which they use as a source of water so dew drop formation dew formation do take place okay that is because of this uh, relationship of relative humidity and absolute humidity and how that changes during the night time so that's the aspect related to precipitation going beyond that when we talk about the vegetation of this region so vegetation in this case very obviously the water availability is very less and so the whatever vegetation would be found over here it will have to adapt so first thing the what the plants that grow in this region in the scarcity of water they fall under the category that are xerophytes so xerophytes are the plants which grow in scarcity of water and if we take certain examples of these xerophytes cactus is one example acacia is another example so in this case cactus and acacia and you can see cactus acacia these are the type of vegetations found over here now definitely they have their own adaptation like say for example when you talk about uh, cactus cactus will have the adaptation features in terms of waxy uh, leaves or modified leaves more importantly these modified leaves so uh, may be modified into thorns to reduce the evapotranspiration okay they will have thick bark okay waxy bark so as to uh reflect more of the sunlight so that is one case apart from that when you talk about acacia acacia has extremely deep roots so as to extract the water from deep underground so these are the adaptations which are found vegetation is a scarce but yet vegetation is found although in these regions there are certain areas which have water okay which now we term as oasis now in the regions oasis oasis has water and wherever oasis is found there we can find uh, palm and date trees also but that is limited to the oasis part okay rest of the uh, desert region i will find these type of xerophytes that is the vegetation aspect and lastly about the animal life over here animal life again needs a lot of uh, modification okay one very popular uh, animal of the desert region definitely the ship of the desert that is camel but apart from camel generally in this region the animals are not very large large animals generally are not found in this region because their water requirement increases and so on so small animals are uh, common in this particular uh, region and if you see we have a number of uh, reptiles okay snakes and all okay along with that lizards okay or you will find a number of rodents in any of these cases when even if you talk about these reptiles or rodents primarily they practice estivation okay where in in during the day time when the temperature is extremely high okay they are going to into their burrows so throughout the day time they will spend in their burrows and in the night time they are going to come out in search of their food so different kinds of animals which are found over here they have their own adaptation features their ways to cope up with this type of extreme climate so this is tropical subtropical hot deserts thank you